Just because Kathy sings doesn't mean that I'm necessarily going to follow. <laughs> uh, it just worked out that way again today. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about, I guess, you know, prepping for this today. So I was flipping through the TV channels around 1 o'clock this morning, and I ran across, uh, I watch a lot of PBS late at night, and I ran across the um, inaugural, pre-inaugural breakfast that was taking place up in Tallahassee. And interestingly enough, it was almost an inter it was almost an interfaith breakfast. And the speeches that every person gave were giving thanks and praise to God and talking about how you could still be humble and still be a leader to people. And we had a lot of different speakers. Some of them were elected officials, but a rabbi got up towards the end of the discussion. And I thought it was kind of appropriate to mention this because we're starting out with John the Baptist, who was considered a prophet by many people. That he was talking about a prophet, and he was talking about who he believed to be the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. And he went on and said quite a few words. I'm going to keep this kind of short, but basically everybody was wondering who he was going to select. Well, he said it was Charlton Heston. <laughs> that was the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. Pray with me for just a minute. Dear Lord, help me today to say meaningful words that will touch the hearts of people and help us to fulfill the things that you want us to do in our lives. Amen. 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 John the Baptist was considered a prophet by those following in his ministry. And he preached about preparing for the coming of one greater than himself, who would be the Son of God, the Messiah. And his ministry was about repentance and renewal and making the world ready for the coming of the promised one. So, I know we just saw it on the video, but imagine the moment when John saw Jesus approaching the waters to be baptized. He recognized that Jesus was the one he had been waiting for and felt unworthy for the task at hand. But Jesus humbled himself to be righteous, and John baptized him. Then the heavens glorified Jesus, and the voice of God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Seeking a relationship with God should give us focus on what is right. And maybe we should try to share that focus with others by doing what we can do to make this world a better place. Because you know what? Jesus is coming again. And he gave us an outline of how we could prepare the way for his second coming. Just like John was preparing the way for that coming, for the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Though sinless, Jesus was baptized and repented. He underwent renewal by following the will of his heavenly Father. He said, not my will, but your will be done. And he made the world a better place by his teachings, by his example, by his humor, and by his ultimate sacrifice for us. So how can we prepare for his coming today? We are not prophets. We certainly do not look or act like John the Baptist. But we can experience a different kind of immersions in our daily lives. We can immerse ourselves in the world and its people. And as members of the United Church of Christ, we can share in its mission to recognize and address injustices in the world that are affecting all peoples. We can help prepare the way for Jesus by working towards a just world for all. We can help change the world by showing love of our neighbors, the love of children, and the love of all creation. Jesus was asked by the Sadducees and Pharisees which was the greatest commandment. And Jesus replied in Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39, 
Love the Lord your God with your heart, all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. This, the first commandment involves our pers personal relationship with God. The second commandment involves our relationship with the world around us. How do we love our neighbor? The ones who do not look like us, think like us, love like us, speak like us, pray like us, or vote like us. It doesn't matter if people are immigrants, elderly, female, LGBT, trans, non-binary, or whoever they are. We do not need walls to keep people out. We need openness to bring people in. And I, and I also am a big Facebook person, as some of you might know. I read on Facebook this week that Jesus spent his whole life engaging the people most of us have spent our lives trying to avoid. So there are no exceptions to whom these neighbors are that we are supposed to love. How do we love children? The ones who are living and growing up under oppression, those who are suffering and dying because of the lack of food, clean water, safe housing, clothing, education, and medical care. Children have rights too. How do we love all creation? the forest, the seas, the animals, and the air. We need to recognize what we can each do to help save the earth and our environment. The second commandment, I think, is the hardest because it directs us to reach outside of ourselves and focus on the changes needed to make this world a better place for all. I think that is what Jesus was trying to do during his time on earth. John prepared the way for Christ's ministry. We know Jesus is coming again. Let us do our part as Christians, immersing ourselves in doing what we can to prepare the way for his second coming. We don't have to be wearing camel's hair and broken sandals and living like a hermit out in the wilderness to make a point to others, although that would get attention. <laughs> Let us do our part by praying advocating, donating, or by, or by whatever way each of us are comfortable with immersing ourselves in to make the world a better place. If we let Jesus raise us up, we can stand on mountains, we can walk on stormy seas, yes. and we will be strong when we are on his shoulders. And just maybe God will look at us and say, these are my children in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Amen.